In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you my Crystal Mage build. This is an updated version of the Sorcerer build that's made for level 100 and is updated for the changes in patch 1.03. So if you've been wondering what to do with that build, watch on to find out. So the first thing I want to talk about in this video is, of course, the staff that you're going to use. The staff that you're going to use is a huge part of playing a mage, and there are, you know, various points in the game where different staffs outperform others. However, you don't generally have infinite upgrade materials until end of the game, so picking the right one is important. What I did for this video is that I went ahead and set my intelligence to 70, took off all my equipment, and upgraded every single staff to 25 that you can get at this point in the game that is a single intelligence scaling staff. I wasn't interested in staffs that, you know, scale with intelligence in arcane or intelligence in faith because we're not using them for this build. So I got every single one that you can use at this point in the game that's not, you know, what I would consider end game, upgraded it to max, tested it at level 75, and I'm going to run you through my findings so you can understand what you want to shoot for. Keep in mind that because in this build we actually have 52 intelligence that the results might be slightly different in terms of which staff is best. However, since you're going to be aiming for about 70 intelligence at endgame with this build, then you'll know what to aim for when you get there. The single most powerful staff you can use at 70 intelligence fully maxed out is Lucid's Glenstone Staff. This will outperform every other staff except for the Staff of Loss when it's using invisibility sorceries in every scenario. That means it will outperform Carrion Regal Staff and every other staff that's even boosting its own school of magic when you're casting those spells. So if you want maximum damage for a single attribute in terms of intelligence staff, this is the one to use. The downside to this is that the damage that it deals is not 50% more. Compared to the Carrion Regal staff, which is basically the runner up here, it only does about, I want to say, 10 to 15% more damage than that staff at a cost of 50% FP. So if you really need damage, it's definitely something you can use, but I don't recommend using it like as you go through a level or dungeons or anything like that, as it's going to drain your FP rapidly and you're going to have FP management issues. And as I've mentioned time and time again, FP management is a huge part of playing a mage. You don't want to run out of flasks between checkpoints and then be doing nothing or be very, very ineffective. So this is not something I recommend using as you go throughout levels and things, but you may want to consider using it in boss fights where you're trying to burn something down quickly. It just really depends. It's not personally a staff that I like to use, but you can use it if you really want the damage. Keep in mind that the further you progress into the game and the more you increase your mind, your FP pool is going to grow, and then this is going to become less and less of an issue, and you might actually get to a point where it doesn't matter. And in second place, as I mentioned, is the Carrion Regal staff. It's about 10% lower than Lucid's on average, and it's probably the best staff if you're mixing all kinds of sorceries together, as it's going to give you the best overall performance. However, it requires 60 intelligence to use, so you won't be able to use it at this point of the game unless you're really going glass cannon. And it does lose out to other staves that are using magic from the school that they buff. For instance, if a staff boosts invisibility sorcery, like the Staff of Loss, it will actually outperform the Carrion Regal staff when casting those spells, but only those spells. And this is, of course, true for the other schools as well. So if you plan to sort of specialize in one school, like Glint Blade Sorceries, for instance, because there are a lot of those, you may want to use the staff that buffs those. This basically left me with two options at this point of the game, because I don't like using Lucid Staff, and we can't get the Carrion Regal Staff. So the next two best staffs, which are basically a tie, are the Academy Glintstone Staff and the Crystal Staff. The Academy Glintstone Staff doesn't boost any sorceries at all, but just has very good damage in general. But the Crystal Staff does about the same damage as it, maybe just slightly one hair more, for uh, regular spells, but it also boosts crystal sorceries, which I really happen to like in this build, so that's why I chose this staff. The two crystal spells I actually use in this build are Crystal Torrent and Crystal Release. Crystal Torrent is sort of like a channel that you hold down, kind of like Comet Azure, that just keeps shooting crystals out, and it is an absolute beast. It's an absolute boss melter, and if you're playing in co-op, or you can get the drop on a boss and set up for it ahead of time, you can absolutely shred their health bar before they even get a chance to respond. Crystal Release is kind of like a shotgun blast in front of you with a bunch of projectiles and it hits in a really wide area and deals really good damage and it's really good against big enemies like gargoyles or you know any sort of big enemy like the big dragons or the big worm type enemies. It absolutely melts them because it hits them with all the projectiles or most of them whenever you use it and you can charge this up for increased damage as well which is great. I also use the Jellyfish Shield with this build. You probably saw this in the Battle Mage build. This is because it buffs all your damage by 20% while you have the buff up, which lasts about 30 seconds and costs 9 FP, which is great. It does require some strength and dexterity investment, which kind of sucks, 
but it also gives you an option to block, which is good. It's a great shield, so it has pretty decent stability. And getting that buff up is going to help keep your damage up all the time. And it's very, very fast animation compared to some of the other buffs in the game, allowing you to do it mid-combat rather easily. And I also use a Talisman in order to cast Bestial Vitality, which is like a small hot with very small faith requirements. And one of the things is I use the Ritual Sword Talisman with this build to boost my damage by 10% at max HP. And this is a great way to keep that topped off without wasting an HP pot. As far as your armor goes, you absolutely want to use the heaviest you can use in Steel Medium Roll, which isn't going to be very heavy with this build because we don't have any points in Endurance. But you're going to want to get as much protection as you can. And as far as your head goes, you're going to want to use something that increases your intelligence because you need to hit 52 intelligence in order to use the Comet spell for this build, which means you're going to have to put something here. Just be careful if you get something that lowers your HP, you're going to be in bad shape because your Vitality or your Vigor actually is already a little bit on the low side. When it comes to Talismans, I have the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Magic Scorpion Charm, the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman, and Godfrey Icon. I already explained the Ritual Sword Talisman. This just gives you an extra 10% damage while your health is full. This applies to all your spells, which is great. So you want to try and keep your health full when you can. Magic Scorpion Charm is going to buff the damage of all your spells by about 10%, but it's going to reduce your resistances, making you a little bit squishier, which kind of sucks. Dragon Crest Shield Talisman plus one is there in order to give you more protection. You have almost no physical protection if you don't use this. I just felt it was too squishy, so I added this here. If you want maximum damage, you can replace this with something like Raven School Talisman to increase your sorcery damage, but I like the little extra protection here, and it allows you to get away with light armor and still gain some decent physical protection. And lastly is Godfrey Icon, which increases the damage of your like charged spells by about 15%. There are a lot of charged spells in this build, so you take advantage of that all the time. The first spell we use in this build is Glintstone Pebble, no surprise here, and the reason that we use this is because it's very mana efficient. You don't need it all the time, but sometimes you need to pick off some weaker enemies, and using 7 FP to do it instead of like 12 or 15 or 19 or whatever, it's just a good way to conserve FP. Again, as your mind gets higher and higher, this will become less of an issue, but it's good to have at this point in the game. I also like it over Swift Glintstone Shard because Swift Glintstone Shard, although it casts faster, has very short range, and as a pure mage, I like to stay as far away from my enemies as possible. Next up is Great Glenstone Shard. This was buffed in 1.03, and making the speed of it faster and the distance further, which was a big improvement because it was almost unusable the way it was. So this is what I default to out on the landscape and when I'm traveling around exploring areas because it does more damage, about 40% or so more than Glenstone Pebble. And it costs a bit more FP, but getting that extra 40% damage or so in one cast is great, and that'll usually allow you to one-shot like regular enemies. Next up, we have Comet, which is kind of like the king of these sort of projectile spells. It's why we need 52 intelligence in order to use this spell. It deals very, very good damage, has a very, very good range, and you can charge it for even further range and to make it deal more damage and pierce enemies. However, it's not extremely mana efficient, so you only want to use it when you need to shell out a lot of damage in a hurry or when you're trying to pick something off that's kind of far away that, you know, Glintstone Pebble just won't cut it. Glintstone Comet Shard is actually much more FP efficient than Comet, and I can see why people would be tempted to use it, but generally what I have found is because the damage between Glintstone Comet Shard and Great Glintstone Shard is kind of similar, it's a little bit more for Glintstone Comet Shard, that I end up, if I can kill something in two Great Glintstone Shards, it ends up being about two Glintstone Comet Shards as well. But because Comet is a bit more damaged than that even, sometimes I can kill something in one Comet or two Great Glenstone Shards. And since Comet is basically just a little over double Great Glenstone Shard, I'm not really losing out too much FP there. Whereas if you're two, using two Glenstone Comet Shards, that's 38 FP and that is not very mana efficient at all. Additionally, we use Terra Magic over this build. It's not something you'll use very often. You'll use it probably most in co-op situations or where you're setting yourself up to go through a boss fight or maybe an area where you have to range down a lot of enemies in a particular time. But it does have its uses, and it increases your magic damage by 35% for 30 seconds, which is great. Next up is Shattering Crystal, and this is sort of the shotgun spell that I mentioned earlier. I think I accidentally called it Crystal Release, but this is the one I was referring to. It hits in a big AoE in front of you. It's really good against big enemies, and it, it's good in groups, too. Like, if you're trying to range down a group of enemies, it has quite a good spread. So it's a good AoE ability, and you don't have too many AoE spells with this build. So you'll definitely want to use this when you're AoE. Crystal Torrent is your channel ability that just shreds. Again, it works really well in co-op situations or situations where you have time to prepare before a boss, like out on the field, or maybe right when you walk through a boss fog while it's walking toward you. We also have Rock Slink with this build. This is our one physical damage spell. It's great for situations where something is magic resistant, and it also does very, very good stagger damage. 
So if you have an enemy that you can lock onto the head of, this will knock them down very quickly, like dragons or something like that. Uh, or a golem, if you can lock onto their ankles, that's their weak spot, it'll knock them down. So make sure when you know that you can lock onto like a head or a weak spot of an enemy that you're using this ability to knock things down. And lastly, I have Roiling Magma here, which is a fire spell that kind of flings a projectile that deals decent fire damage. And again, it's really here for bosses that are magic resistant. You don't want to get into a boss fight and just be completely useless. So you're going to use this against like, you know, the Erd Tree type enemies. These guys are very weak to fire, so it's good against them. And one particular interesting thing about this is if you actually hit the ground instead of the target, it'll sort of put like a projectile thing down there that like times and then explodes and puts magma all over the ground. And enemies seem to be lured towards it. So when you're using it, generally it not, can't always be helped, but you want to try and aim for the ground if you can. When it comes to attributes for this build, I have 27 Vigor, 35 Mind, 10 Endurance, 20 Strength, 14 Dexterity, 52 Intelligence, 14 Faith, and 9 Arcane. 27 Vigor is much lower than I'd like, and as you improve this build and you go higher and higher towards 150, you're going to want to get this up to at least 40 or 50. It's basically as much points as I could put here. You could probably pull some out of mind if you want and put them there if you feel like you're getting one shot, but I feel like if you do that, you're going to have FP issues. So that's why I put the Dragon Crest uh, Talisman in there to help give you some resistances so that you don't die as easily. Mind is there in order to cast spells at will. As you get, you know, spells that are stronger and better, they cast more FP, and you're going to want to be able to use them and not worry about your FP pool. 35 Mind is a really good spot, in my opinion. You have lots of FP to be able to cast with, and because you're going to have more blue flasks than red ones, you shouldn't have any FP issues at all. We have 10 Endurance here, and admittedly, I would like to have more not only for casting stamina, but equip load so that you can have better armor, but we just don't have the points right now. 20 Strength is there to be able to meet the requirements of the Jellyfish Shield, so that's why we have that. You definitely don't want any more points than that, and same for Dexterity. It has a required a minimum of 14 points, so that's why those are there. You can actually use Radagon's Source Seal here if you want to sacrifice a bit of damage and, on your character in order to get your Vigor and your Endurance up a bit in order to meet those points for Strength and Dexterity without having to invest points here. That might free up some more points to dump into Vigor if you want, or put into Intelligence. Um, I didn't put it there because I feel like I really like the talismans that I have kind of attached to those ones, but it is an option if you want to do that. Intelligence is 52 in order to meet the requirements for Comet, as I mentioned, and it'll also increase your spell damage a lot, so you're going to hit really, really hard at this point of the game. Faith needs to be at least 12 for Roiling Magma for this build. It doesn't need to be any higher than that, so if you have a different class than me, I was started as a Confessor, you actually have a couple more points there that you can put into Vigor, which is good. And Arcane is completely irrelevant for this build. One thing that you could do as well if you don't like using the Jellyfish Shield is that instead of putting points into Strength and Dexterity, you could put them into Faith in order to get Golden Vow. You don't even have to upgrade a Seal in order to cast this because it doesn't affect the damage or the damage mitigation. So that's a way to get 15% more damage and some protection. It'll be a little bit less damage than the Jellyfish Shield, but you'll have to buff less often and you won't have to carry that shield around, which would be freeing up some equip weight. So if you'd rather do that, then swap out the Jellyfish Shield grab a seal instead, and put some points into faith. That will also give you access to some spells that require faith and intelligence. One last tip before I wrap up this video, you're going to want to make sure to pop your Flask of Wonders Physique before fighting a boss or a tough enemy, and you're going to want to make sure you have the Magic Shrouding tier in there and Cerulean Hidden tier. This is going to increase your magic damage by 30% for 3 minutes, which is great, and it'll also eliminate all FP consumption for 10 seconds. So get your buffs up, walk through the fog, pop this potion, and then use Crystal Torn to absolutely nuke bosses because it consumes no FP for, you know, 10 seconds. And you can just hold it down that whole time as long as you have an opening. That wraps up this video. I have a couple ideas for other 100 level builds. So I'm going to try and bang those out real quick. And then I think we're going to move on to the end game 150 level builds.